You know, I got an email from someone asking me to explain the grays, the string of grays in more detail. I thought I've done that, but we'll do it again. And it's, it all starts with how the palette is set up. So I have already mentioned this palette in previous videos, but we'll, we'll go over it quickly again. You see, this is set up from light to dark. And it's essential that the palette is arranged this way, because if you're organized here, <clears throat> you'll be organized on the canvas. And so what's important about this palette, as it goes from light to dark, we have to know where the middle is. And the middle is around orange and yellow ochre value, in between light and dark. So we mix a string of grays from light to dark, corresponding with the values of these colors. Now, when I was studying in New York at the Art Students League with Frank Mason, we had to mix a value for, of gray for each one of these. I haven't done that. Uh, I don't do that anymore. I, I just mix about half a dozen because we want the essential ones, the light, the middle, and the dark. And so, I'm going to show you if a, a black and white picture of this palette. See, this, this value is the middle gray right here. And that's the middle. And then we have the cadmium yellow light, a mix of gray there. And this is, this is the cobalt blue value. So we have, have from white to black and in between. Now, What's important is, from the middle on up, if we're painting a portrait or painting a still life, we're painting light from here on up. If we're painting outdoors, shadow begins at the middle and goes down. So we have to know the, the, uh, the values. And the grays control the intensity of the color. They're the atmosphere, really. You know, give us the atmosphere of turning edges, you see. And it moves from the light to in the shadow, we have a cool tone, which is the gray. And if you put a little yellow ochre with the gray, it makes a green. This is what the, the Dutch masters like to do. You'll see that in Franz Halls, especially. And so you, you see the point. You have the warm light, the cool half tones and the warm shadows. So, that, so whether we paint a landscape, a floral, then, you know, if you paint apples, if you paint metal, metallic objects, trees, anything, we have to know where the, the, uh, the turning planes are and those are where the grays are. That's where you get your atmosphere. And atmosphere is the most difficult thing for art students to, to grasp. And I can't tell you how many resist the idea of mixing these grays. So um, we'll just run through a you know quick list or, or quick showing of paintings and how this all comes together, okay? So here's the palette with the cadmium yellows and then the orange and ochre cadmium reds Lizard and crimson and the blues and then down to blacks. Now here it is in black and white. So you can see how I'm matching the gray values to the string of pure color. And that's the main point here. So here's a close up of the portrait. You see the cool half tones around the mouth. They turn this form. They turn, you see, they turn the forehead through here through here, all the way down through here. There. And then the, the gray also turns the edge of the head, you see. Here's a painting with some apples. And once again, you can see the grays as they turn. You know, they uh, influence the color. They kill the intensity of the color and it cools it so it goes away. Look how much this goes away. I want those apples to go further away so I have more gray. 
and a slightly darker value. You see, see how that, you know, the gray with the yellow turns the object. So we have the cool half tones. We have the warm light, cool half tone going into warm shadow. See, and that's with every object, even with this jug. See, see the gray's turn. That's the atmosphere. It's the, and I think that's pretty clear. Even when you, you paint a table, you know, you have the warm light here, and then it moves into this cool gray, this cool gray plane, see? And then it goes into the warm shadow. Here's a close-up of a portrait. And see, once again, cool half-tones turning the head just like just like the apple and then you have the warm light here building here and moving into the cool half tones and then the warm shadows and you see you model with those grays model the form to make it turn see there's gray here it, it like I said it um, influences the intensity of the color. Whenever you want to dull the color, and it has to get duller as it turns, you know, you have to neutralize the color. Here's a painting from my student days at the Art Students League. There we are, see the grays turn, turn the form. Turns the form of the lips right here from the warm light of the cheek moving into the warm shadow. We have that cool half tone. Let's see. It even turns the hair. Here's the hand. You can see all the grays I used in the hand to turn these forms and to turn the arm. It's a cool tone. You know, and here's the here's the transition from the light to shadow. You see, you can't do it without the grays. You have to have the half tones. See, grays are mixed with the greens in this landscape, which once again you know controls the intensity of the color. All through, you know, all through here, gray, gray, and green. And then use a darker gray with green for the darker greens. There's grays in the rocks, grays actually in violets also. See, so it's always the turning, turning the planes. Grays are used to kill the intensity of the blues I'm using in these hydrangeas. This is just a small study that I did, just wanted to show the form of those, those spherical flowers. But there's, there's gray all through here controlling the blues and the violets. And, you know, and the light comes out in the center of the form. I hope that this short video helped to explain further how to use the grays and what they're used for. And if you look at the old masters, Rembrandt, Rubens, Velasquez, you know, especially Velasquez, you'll see the grays all over his work, even Caravaggio. And then you go all through history of the great painters, even the great American portrait painters of the late 19th century, early 20th, like John Singer Sargent. You'll see how he used the grays just in the way I explained them. And so, you know, this site is dedicated to the principles of classical art and classical painting. And um, these, are, these are important things to grab onto if you want to improve your art and give it, give it a feeling of atmosphere and space and light.